Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. Are you tired of these traditional mangled mess heaters that don't have any reliability to them whatsoever? I am and I'm getting rid of them. I got a product right here that I think you're going to love. I'm going to introduce it to you. Stick with me and we'll get right to it. Hi everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do a unboxing or as it were an unpackaging of an item that I hope is in this bag here because I do have several items coming from Amazon and uh, I hope this is what I'm looking for because I did ask for it to be shipped overnight. But um, we can all relate to the problems that we're dealing with when it comes to heaters. I have a drawer full of these types of heaters right here that I absolutely hate. They fail <laughs> more times than I can tell you and you can just keep spending money and keep spending money and uh, the reason why they fail, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this before we do this on uh, packaging here. And the reason why they fail mostly is because heaters are designed to go off and on based on the temperature, obviously, of uh, what they're being set at. Some of these are preset. So in other words, in this particular case, this will go up to about 10 gallons of, of water in a tank, and it is preset at 78 degrees and designed to set off um, or shut off, I should say, at that temperature. Now, the reason why this is a problem with this particular design is because when this thing is continuously going off and on, the mechanism in here that shuts that off and turns it back on is constantly being um, adjusted all the time. In other words, it goes off, it goes on, it goes off, it goes on, and inevitably what happens is the little component in here, and there isn't much to this, and this is the reason why these fail, it inevitably fails and does not work any longer, and uh, sometimes we learn the hard way, we lose a whole bunch of fish, um, or they just simply don't work and we figure that out and we have to go out and buy another one. Now these are not cheap. Uh, they run uh, somewhere between, uh, depending on what the wattage is. On this one here, we're looking at approximately 50 watts. So roughly probably 29 to $39, depending on um, what brand you buy. Uh, this is an Aquion. I'm going to say that because their heaters absolutely suck unless you absolutely spend a tremendous amount of money for something that's very high end. So I, I was talking to a friend of mine who said, you know, George, you got to get away from those kind of heaters. You really do. And about, I, I would say a year ago or so, I just made the switch over and I decided sometimes spending more money up front for something that you know is going to last, you know it's going to work, and you know that you have some control over it is much better than buying something that's inexpensive and you're going to have to buy it five times. Buy once instead of five times, pay a little bit more. That's really my motto in life on just about everything. But this can be a real interesting uh, dilemma to get yourself into because it really does uh, cost a lot of money over time, especially if you're running a lot of tanks like I do. Uh, I have so many tanks in my house, I don't even, I'm embarrassed to tell you how many tanks I have in my house. But when you start adding up the failures of these over time, it really starts to mount as far as the cost and uh, the inconvenience and sometimes the loss of fish, depending on what tank you have these in and how dependent your fish are on a constant source of heat. So we're going to unpackage uh, this and put this back into the drawer. That was really a prop because I don't keep it in this drawer typically. But in order to show you this, I wanted to be able to conveniently get to it. So we're going to unpackage this today and we're going to talk about 
a heater that I think is going to be life-changing for you if you already don't have one you're going to run out and get one of these I promise you if you are somebody in the hobby uh, and you are um, somebody that really is concerned about the well-being of your fish and you don't want to have the problems that we just talked about this may be life-changing for you so let's get to this and uh, get this package open now I hate Amazon's packaging for one reason uh, they're impossible to open so I just typically take a pair of scissors and cut across the top of the packaging we'll let it drop to the floor we'll clean that up later and just get in here and yes, this is what we were looking for. So we're going to dispose of that. Anyways, this is a product, and I'm going to show you right here. I'll get a little closer to the camera here. It is made by um, a company called Aquarium Masters. Now, these guys make a lot of different products that I really like, but this is one that I consistently get. And I use it on any tank that is 20 gallons or more. Some of these smaller ones here, uh, you know, if you're doing a five gallon nano tank or something like that, there's no room in your tank for something like this. You really need a design. Now this is for this tank here because I had a failure of a heater that I was using in here that I knew better than to use it, but I didn't. So I had it on hand. I was trying to save a little money. We're in this pandemic here. I don't like running out to the store. So I just ordered this online, basically. And basically what this is, is a smart heater. And what I mean by a smart heater is that this is a heater that is going to not only regulate your temperature in your, in your aquarium, but it does not go off and on. It stays at a regular heat um, uh, range that does not allow for the heater to actually go off. It really has a thermostat with it and it has, um, if it's exactly like the ones that I have in my other tanks, uh, for example this one here, um, then it probably has a remote with it as well and it also has the capability in line to have a little switch on there where you can adjust the heat on it too. But the nice thing about it is you can adjust that heat and uh, you don't have to touch it again. And it gives you some options here. Um, I don't have, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. The options that you have with this uh, is accuracy, number one. Uh, like I said, it's, it's extremely accurate on temperature because it does not allow for that fluctuation and that off and on consistently and constantly. It's an intelligent um, uh, heater in the sense that it remembers. Now that's the important component to this that I think is so refreshing and so cool about these is that for example, if your power went out and um, it was out for a day or two, this has a memory because it has a built-in little battery inside the, uh, the system itself to remember the last temperature that you set it at in the aquarium. And when your power comes back on, it doesn't have this big surge or anything like that. It just has the memory of the last time it was plugged in and the temperature that you had it at. So if you're leaving it in the same tank, um, you won't have to do any adjustments whatsoever. Now, safety. Totally submersible. Even though it has all of these components in there that are really tricky and really sophisticated, you can totally submerse this in uh, a tank. If you don't, this one has a back in here, and I'm going to show you that when we uh, set this up. But it does have a back in here that is uh, a spot where you can put this heater. And uh, typically, if it's like the other ones I have, because I have two or three of these that are exactly the same. Um, and I've never really talked about them before, and I don't know why. But today I just thought, you know, I'd bring it up because I've had a couple of people tell me that they've had some failures with bad weather. People that live in the south. Uh, with the hurricanes and things like that, their power's been out and they've had to uh, 
uh, worry about uh, you know these surges when their power comes back on a lot of times that just destroys a heater so uh, the safety in this is that all of these components are hermetically sealed there's no chance of water getting into them and shorting them out or anything like that so that's a nice safety feature uh, as well as the fact that these um, temperatures that you're setting them at are not going to go up and down constantly or um, send your tank up to 95 or 98 degrees which you can get these up to I think they go up to about 98 degrees and uh, you just don't have to worry about that it's it's just a peace of mind I would say for you uh, in that safety department touch now what I mean by touch is that, like I said, there are two ways that you can set the temperature on this. And uh, those ways of doing that are, number one, you have a remote control that comes with these. I hope this came with a remote control. We'll find out in a few minutes here. But all of them usually do. But uh, the touch on these is also not just the remote control where you can set the temperature up and down, but it also has a toggle switch on the back of it that you can set the temperature at a certain one if you misplace the remote control or whatever. You still have the ability to not make this a useless component and uh, you can still use that toggle switch on the back to set the temperature up and down. Now again, uh, the last thing about this that is right on the front of the package here and that's versatility. So this does not have to be straight up and down. It can be sideways, it can be totally submersible. It's versatile to uh, being hidden in the back and it is lit up. It has a digital light on it as you can see in the picture here. So you can see through the black background back there and still see your temperature uh, in there as well as if you wanted to place this in your tank and you don't have one of these areas behind here that is sealed off from the rest of the aquarium where your filtration is, where your pump is, where your heater goes, and uh, uh, all of the different things that it takes to run your system. Everything is hidden behind there, but you can still see the temperature through this smoky little glass piece or plastic piece. I think this is actually plastic back here. I'm not positive of that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. By the way, this is a Waterbox Cube 20, one of my very favorite um, uh, cube, can, um, I can't talk, cube aquariums. And I really, really love this product. And we're gonna be talking about more of this uh, in the future because we're gonna be setting up a couple more of these um, in the not too distant future. I do have a few of them coming in the mail that Waterbox has been kind enough to send me. But that's another subject and we'll get into that later on here. Um, this thing is a really advanced system and I think you're really going to find that it's going to make your life so much easier and you're going to spend so much less money because you're not going to be continuously changing these. And uh, it just, it, it, to me, I, I, I feel like I have a sense of control with this that I don't have with other heaters where I'm unsure about the little buttons on the top or the little turn things on the top. They drive me crazy because you don't know if they're really going to heat at that and you're constantly checking the temperature or you have to put a temperature strip on the outside. This guy right here is going to give you peace of mind because once you set it, I, I, I don't want to coin a phrase that's stupid like uh, the rotisserie guy on TV there, set it and forget it, but that's really what we're talking about here. We're talking about setting this, forgetting about it, and not worrying about it. And as I said, if your power goes out or you unplug it because you're doing maintenance or something like that, this thing is going to remember the temperature in there because it has a small little tiny battery that keeps that memory going. I don't know how long it keeps it going for, but certainly if you have a few days of a power outage or something like that, it's gonna remember that. I think you're gonna really, really enjoy uh, using this. If you don't already have one, I urge you to go out and get one. 
but we're going to do the unboxing of this guy and we're going to do that right now so let's uh open this guy up this is uh, another product we're going to talk about in a minute here but this is really the main focus today is uh it's got one of those plastic seals on it on the back here that i'm gonna have to cut open and hopefully that's going to give me the ability to open this box yes it is so what it comes with is a bubble pack of items that are in here and uh, as you can see they're in a bubble pack and this is your thermometer not your thermometer, your heater. And as you can see, it's a very streamlined um, piece of equipment. It, and it's uh, something that is very protected. As you can see, the casing on the outside of this protects all of the components of the heating on the inside here, which is really, really important. It's a, a peace of mind thing, really. Um, we do have the remote control that comes with it, uh, which is good. And I'm looking for a couple of other items, which would be the little um, uh, suction cups that keep this on the back uh, in a nice, uh, steady uh, way of attaching this. So the first thing we're going to do is, number one, when you unbox this, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to not plug this in. You don't want to plug this in until you put it in the water. Now, one of the safety features is on this that if you do take this out of the water or the water gets down too low, it will shut off. And that safety feature is really, really great because it will not destroy your heater. It will not destroy it. Now, you can turn this thing on, but what they recommend uh, is not plugging this thing in until you have it submersed in water. And uh, we'll do that in a minute here because it does need to be in water to get the programming going. It has to have something to read temperature by in order to set that programming. So now this is going to be facing in this direction because the numbers are going to be up in this area. You can't see them because it's not on right now. But because I have several of these, I know this. Um, we're going to put these little feet on, and they can be a little bit tricky because they don't really fit really well in there. But once they're in there, you pull up on them, and uh, you can get that nice tight fit um, that is going to be good suction for the bottom. And the bottom one is in the opposite. It's a, the, t the larger hole is on the top and then you pull down on it to slide it into the channel. Uh, it's the opposite on the uh, top one here. The bottom one is completely different, uh, and you pull in the opposite direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to, um, yeah, we're going to undo this. I just didn't want to undo the bottom one because sometimes it's not necessary when you're that close. You have enough um, wire here. They always make these things extremely difficult to undo, but we're going to uh, get the wires off this thing, at least I think we are. Yes, there we go. And I always try to keep those in the box in case I need them later on. So now what I try to do is to gently straighten out this cord so that you're not dealing with all these little ripples and whatever. So now at this point here, basically what I'm going to do, and I hope you can see this, is I'm going to place this in the back of my system here, and I hope that I can get it in here in a way that I can still have you see me doing this and not be in front of the camera. Uh, yes, I did. And suction is very good and you want to slide it down as far as you possibly can inside the heater I probably should have had some kind of towel in here 
we want to get that. And I, I literally did run and get that because I didn't want to waste your time and make this video longer than it really needs to be. So the second part of this is this inline, like I told you, adjustment that uh, is going to be very important in case you ever lose this guy right here, which is uh, the... Um, remote control for this thing here. Now, I don't know if I need to um, undo uh, this bottom uh, twist tie here because what I think I'm going to do is feed this along here. And I know that I have enough area here in which to, we'll just set this up here. I'm not trying to advertise for these guys, but they do send me these for free. I don't get any monetary um, funding from them for doing this, but the product is free. So I do have an open spot where the old one was, and I'm going to plug that in now. And uh, you probably can't see, but it is reading at 78 degrees right now. So let's get this out of the way and uh, put that in the box. There is a couple of more um, uh, uh, little bumpers that come with this that are small. Those are really used if you're going to put this inside the tank in here and use it that way. So anyway, I um, We'll just keep this box out. I was going to store it in here, but there really isn't enough room to do that. So anyways, um, we've got this thing plugged in. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to set the temperature on this. Now this particular tank here has some fish in here that are sensitive to uh, temperature. So I want this to run between 78 and 81 degrees. Uh, 81 is probably what I will set this at simply because um, I think it's set at 78 from what I can see when I'm looking through there. You can't see that. Um, if I had another camera set up, which I didn't do for this particular video, I would be able to show you that. But it's, 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 I think that's the pre uh, temperature setup is 78 degrees and then you can go up and down from there. So the remote control is right here. And basically what I'm going to do, this is a pretty simple remote control. It just has a little eye uh, sort of uh, bubble on the front here that just uh, brings this up and down and back to 78 degrees. After it reaches 98, it recycles every time you click on it. Now, the nice thing about this is that it can read, you know, pretty well through the glass or whatever. It's not hard to do that. If it is a problem, then you always have the one that's on the um, cord here, as you can see, that you can use as well. Now, I've never had to do that. The remote always works really well, so we'll go ahead and try to set that. And I'm going to stay out of your way, but I need to be able to see, which I can at an angle here, the different temperatures that we have this at. So it's 78, 79, 80, 81 degrees. Now, the nice thing about this is there's two different readings on this, and you can see it in the box. You can't see it in here because I've got too many plants in the way there. But if you look at the box here, the temperature that you're setting it at is down at the bottom. It says 86 on here. I don't know why they do that. And then it says 82 at the top. So basically what you're trying to do is tell this that you want to heat it to 86 degrees. And this thing is probably, the picture was probably taken while this was on its way up. I don't understand that a little bit because it does have a green light on there. Right now, mine is a red light. It does not show a green light, which means that it's heating the tank up. 
Um, this tank has been without a heater overnight. I improvised by using this little guy down here and that really wasn't enough. So uh, basically uh, I've set it right now to 81 and I would say probably within an hour or so that will be up to temperature. It will acclimate the fish very slowly and uh, it, will, it will do that in a way that doesn't shock the fish in any way. And I don't mean literally shock the fish electrically or anything like that, but what I mean is it will not shock their system in the sense that it's a nice, slow, and gradual movement of the heat going up. And uh, it's not usually heat going up that creates a problem for the fish, especially, well, if it's really high it is, but if it's heat that is going down because of a failure of a product, that's when they start to have problems. But as you're heating it to go back up, Generally, that's not uh, any kind of a problem at all. So this is 100 watts here. So this is good for tanks up to about 40 gallons, I believe. If I read the instructions on the back here, yes, uh, this is good for uh, up to, actually it says uh, 40 gallons, and it is 100 watts. So. Um, this 100 watts right here is more than sufficient to run a 20 gallon cube, which is what I have here. And like I said, um, I just think these things are fantastic. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this and make this a hugely long video. I've probably taken more time than I, I need to already. But um, again, let's go over just a, a couple of the things that I think are so great about these. Number one, you're not going to have problems with the fluctuation of this thing constantly going on and off, on and off, on and off. That's what kills heaters almost 99.9% .9 of the time is the little um, controller inside one of these older heaters like this is that they are continuously off and on, off and on, off and on. And uh, with this particular one, you're not going to have that. You're going to have a heater that basically is going to stay at that temperature and just, it, it knows it's it to be at 81, the way I have it set right now, and it will just constantly stay there. It'll never go off and it'll never come back on. It will just constantly keep that water at 81 degrees. Now, if you want to uh, turn this thing up because you're a breeder or something like that and you want your temperatures to go up to say 83 or something like that, it is so easy to do. You just take the remote here and you set it and you just don't even have to think about it again. The other thing, like I said, is uh, it's very accurate. It's not one of those things where you have to worry at all about fluctuations and, and so forth. Um, intelligent as I said because it does have that memory in there so if you do have the power outage like I said or you have to unplug it for a certain amount of time it's really going to be one of those things where you can um, just not really worry about it uh, it will as soon as you plug it back in where the power comes back on it simply will go back to the last setting that you had it on. That way you don't even have to think about it. I think that's such, such a, an important factor for peace of mind. Again, safety, you know, this thing is wrapped around the coils that are in there. That's one safe thing, so you can't break it by banging it around. The other safety features are that it's totally submersible, so anything that is in this, uh, that is digital or electronic or computerized or whatever, uh, it's hermetically sealed, so it is not going to get any kind of water in there whatsoever. And uh, to me, that's something, I've had uh, heaters in the past where I have put my hand in the water and I've gotten a little bit of a, a, a tingly feeling because the heater was acting weird. They're not supposed to do that but it can happen. And uh, the convenience of the touch, uh, either on the uh, remote control to set it, 
and uh, the inline one in case you lose this. I mean, these are so easy to misplace. I try to keep everything right close by wherever the tanks are in the room, but it, you can misplace these, so it's nice to know that if you do that, there is another one that's built in, uh, in line there, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can you, you can not worry about your remote control at the time. You can square away the problem that you have. But again, it's, it's redundant in some ways because this thing has a memory on it that's going to come right back to where you need it to be. The only thing that I would tell you that you would have to use that for is if you're raising the temperature on purpose or lowering the temperature on purpose, you would need to have one of the two, either the remote or the one that's in line. And, uh, or if you were uh, completely tearing this tank down and you were gonna use this heater for another product or another aquarium, I should say, uh, then you might wanna make some changes on that as well. And then the versatility of it. Like I said, it's so important that you are able to uh, put this sideways in a, in a big computer like, or a big computer, a big um, aquarium where you can hide it behind the rocks and the substrate, setting it down low where you don't have to look at it. That's really nice. Now you can do that with most heaters. I'm not saying you can't. What I am saying is that you can do this and rest assured that uh, with just using the remote control, you can adjust it. And so it's very versatile that way. It can go up and down or it can go sideways. It can go diagonally. It, it doesn't matter how you place this in the computer. It all works. There is so much to this to like, and it is a peace of mind that I think you can really justify spending the extra money on this. Now, we're going to get into cost here a little bit because I don't want to be um, sort of elusive on the cost here or misrepresent the product because these are not cheap. They're not cheap. Um, you're going to pay about for 100 watt when I think I paid 69. If you go to a big box store or you go to your local mom and pop, you're probably not gonna find it on Amazon or like you would on Amazon for 69. You're probably gonna pay more like 79 to $89. You might wanna check on Amazon before you make a purchase at your local store. I know sometimes we need a heater really fast, but Amazon is really good at getting these things to you overnight. They understand that this is a product that is uh, very, very important to you when it comes to a fish tank because you gotta have heat. Um, for those so um, yeah so getting these through Amazon has been what I have done uh, the very first one that I bought of course I bought through uh, a mom-and-pop store that I do a lot of business with they kind of turned me on to the idea of using these a couple of years ago uh, these have been around for a while there's nothing new about this it's just that you know they're they're out of most people's price range and it's all relative to uh, to that in general. So what I would say is that um, take your time, research it a little bit. There are several different companies out there that make these. This is not the only company. Um, Aquarium Masters, I think, makes the best one for the price. So I would suggest this product to you. And I also suggest it to you because I've used them. I've had a lot of success with them and I'm happy with them. So one more product that I want to get to, if you're not using it, and that is Seachem's Prime. If you are not using Prime, you really need to get some of this and try it out because it is the best water conditioner for water changes that I've ever used. Now, it's a funky smelling product, I'll tell you that for sure. When you open this, it's got kind of a sulfuric smell to it not dangerous to your fish and you cannot overuse this. Follow the instructions on the back. This is a smaller bottle. Um, I do have some larger jugs of this. In fact, you can get this in a, in a one gallon jug if you want to, if you have a lot of aquariums like I do. What I do typically is with Seachem Prime, I typically will keep a bottle like this. I will have a 
gallon jug and I will fill these up and leave them in the areas where I'm doing maintenance on my computer. So whenever you're doing a water change, Seachem Prime, try it out. It's one of the best out there. It does some things automatically that a lot of other ones do not do. It actually has a component built into here that actually will bring your ammonia down at the same time you're doing a water change as well as dechlorinating the water at the same time. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that you got some great information on this heater. I hope it's a product that you can use. Like I said, instead of spending a ton of money on replacing heaters all the time, spend that money up front. Buy a good heater like this one right here that I just showed you. And uh, again, it is made by uh, Aquarium Masters. And like I said, there are other companies out there that make these. As a disclosure, this was sent to me and it's free. I don't make any money off these guys. I don't really advertise for them. I just happen to like their product and they do send them to me um, for free uh, because I use them and I do mention them in my videos. So uh, having said that, thank you so much for joining me. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment. If there's anything in this video that you didn't like or you wanted to add to or if you have another question, Hit me up on it and the comment button down below. Hit the button up at the top. I think it's on this side here for the bell. I always forget where that is, but I think it's up here. But it will be in this video when I um, download it. So, uh, anyways, Corian Masters, great product on the heater. Seachem, great product on the water conditioner. Thank you guys for joining me, and we'll see you again soon. Until then, we're out.